Well, we've all been waiting and it's finally here. I get to share with you guys the roadmap as well as my thoughts on the latest dev update that was just released as it kind of leads us into the next patch and the content to come. But I'm gonna focus this video first and foremost on the roadmap because if you've been following this game, if you've been following my content here, well, you'll probably note that the second part of this video is gonna be a lot of stuff that you've already known. There's some interesting points and maybe a little bit of frustrations that I kind of might, you know, vent a little bit. Um, and hopefully that feedback we can continue to give the devs and overall continue to help improve New World to make it the best game that it can be. But anyway, this is a long ass intro. I apologize for that. Welcome everyone and hello. Uh, my name is Brian if you're new around here. For your returning subscribers, thank you A for coming back to this video, B for being awesome, and uh, for C for smashing that like button whenever you get the opportunity. I realize I do a very bad job at reminding people to hit that button and it does help these videos out immensely. But we've got a lot to talk about. This video is going to be broken up with the roadmap 2023. Uh, I've got some really good news. I've got some, I think, some clarifications and some insight that I can add to what they've shared here today. And then the second part of this video is going to be focusing in on Winter Convergence, the Starstone Amorine mashup that's coming uh, with the next update, territory control changes, as well as their thoughts on what other changes they're making to the town boards. If you guys have been following that, I've got some thoughts. I'm actually not specifically happy with their answer, and I'm going to provide some additional insight. And if you've been following like my content, like I've said, you probably could probably guess what I would recommend in that space. So let's buckle up and dive right in. So for the roadmap for 2023, we've got two different seasonal points, spring 2023 and summer 2023, as well as kind of an overarching kind of theme to everything else. Like they're stating that, A, like within all development, I'm a software dev, so I kind of relate to this. Uh, things can change. They can change for a couple of reasons. You know, you miss kind of a sprint and at the same time, based off of our feedback, things could get moved around, but there's some real key indicators. They've already communicated and confirmed things like mounts and, and so much more in that space, but the roadmap does not include mounts on it, but it does include some really big takeaways. And so let's go ahead and first dive in. For spring, we're getting the Inferion Forge Expedition. Uh, this is a first part of a two-part story, and this is gonna feature the Varangians. This is gonna be our first expedition that's gonna be us fighting humans. I think this is gonna be really cool to see. I've been enjoying the Varangian story as they've made their way further and further into uh, Eternum. Also on this note, more of the storyline refinement is gonna be coming in with uh, Weavers and Brightwood getting their remake, remaster, remapping, whatever we wanna kinda look at it. But I don't know ultimately what that's gonna mean is that I would think maybe 25 to 35, or uh, maybe 40 in terms of the kind of the story refinement. So that's gonna continue on and they did not say that that was happening in summer, but there's also not a fall note on here. And I'm going to talk about why I think that's the case here in just a second. Anyhow, uh, we're also going to get gear set storage. This is our gear set system coming into play the way the devs described it. Uh, they were just flat out giddy. I think this is going to be a game changer for all of us who have been playing this game and wanting to do a handful of different things. I've been mainlining healer which is something I really enjoy, but I also really enjoy tanking. But you know what keeps me from switching? Just the pain points of this. So they did not show it off visually, but we're gonna probably start seeing that here on the PTR sometime in 2023 earlier, and we'll be sure to cover it here uh, for you in detail. I personally hope that they give us the ability to name these gear sets. So that would be kind of fun. You can kind of name your class, so to speak, and uh, we're gonna explore how that goes. Now, we also had confirmation earlier on, obviously Springtime Bloom is gonna be the event that's kicking off uh, that's gonna kinda feel like what we've seen them talk about, how they're gonna have major and minor events. Right now with Turkulon, that's more on the minor side. Winter Convergence is main. Uh, obviously the Halloween event is a main one. Medley Fair and now the uh, Springtime Bloom. Basically kind of, you know, kind of bookmarking the seasonal aspect of the game coming in and this is the full makeover of the towns this is a new activity where you're going to have to harvest springtime flowers and going to have to kind of fight off bugs or spray them to kind of keep them at bay and getting your tokens and turning them in etc they also want to cover some new updates coming to the winter convergence but the other thing is is that with all these events the bigger events they want they keep growing them so we've already seen and they've already talked about big changes 
but they're also keeping the winter convergence so it looks like it's going to be events that build on each other over time which i think is personally very exciting uh that is the springtime events also included or not included here additional quality of life additional things like this happening uh, more cinematics heart uh, heart room gyms and more uh, they didn't get into real details so this is just kind of a taste of the bullet points and like with summer and with a couple of these things we they tend to also kind of put in some secrets but i think it's clear with these devs that they're having a freaking fun time and they almost looked like they were just too giddy so whether they were drinking the eggnog early or whatnot um it was a personal treat to kind of experience this now for summer 2023 transmog if you've been looking for this system the they kind of get into detail which is actually kind of surprising it's got the collection mechanic it sounds like from everything that i've what they were saying is that you're going to be able to see what you've collected and what you haven't and that's going to be all a part of your transmog system which for me sounds awesome because a it's going to give you kind of personalized goals and b you can kind of see what's out there and if you decide you want to go chase after it i think this is going to end up adding a lot of value for a lot of people now transmog isn't my thing and i'm not saying that you need to agree with me i'm just saying that i've never really been kind of the fashion forward person in real life and my virtual life does not translate into the same kind of thing in fact if you look at all my houses in new world poorly decorated in fact if anybody ever wants to come help me out and decorate my house hit me up i i'm game to be it to be advised and counseled it's not really kind of my thing i'm not good at it i'm not good at it in the real world definitely not good at it virtually but all that being said, I know this is a key point that a lot of people have been wanting for it. But we've got some bigger stuff than just transmog, in my opinion. Two things. The raid is coming in the summer, and raid groups are coming in the summer as well. So this is going to be four different groups can actually create a 20-person raid group to do larger scale content, both in the raid, fighting off the sandworm, and also in the open world. The, the chest runs, all the different high-end stuff. Like, this is going to allow for kind of these war bands uh, teaming up and being able to do content in the open world and just regular which for me is awesome because one of the things we've enjoyed doing is closing portals doing chest runs and doing all this content as a group having to run multiple groups this will solve that problem and we can get some insane things and who knows maybe this will also be something used for open world pvp that's one thing they did not talk about and that's when i would say like a little bit of frustrations um i doesn't mean that they're not working on it they didn't confirm a new opr map um, I, I know a lot of people were assuming that yesterday based off of Scott's tweet, even though he didn't say OPR. Anyhow, like there's still a lot that I think we need to talk about uh, about the future for this game. Anyway, um, they did talk about OPR and having its cross world uh, being implemented. I do wonder if we'll see maps and things like that around the same time. They're just not committing to that yet on a, on a map itself, but it is what it is. And then finally, the summer medley fair is returning. And just like with the winter convergence, uh, looking like they're going to continue to improve and add in new things for that event itself. So all in all, like this is a decent roadmap. This is pretty meaty. I love that I can now communicate when we're getting gear sets and transmog obviously the other things that we want controller support mounts all these things have been confirmed but we don't yet have dates on that and that kind of gets into where's the fall right where in the world did the fall 2023 go to and i think that's something bigger i i, I continue to have this feeling and again this is not rooted in any inside knowledge i have been told by sources um you know that aren't within amazon but that the game will be coming to console controller support makes it happen if you start to think of maybe the fall as being kind of 2.0 that would be something interesting they haven't said the word expansion they haven't done these things we don't know if that's the route they're going to go or they're going to go the new world route but with the fall being oddly off this list that means that i think they're going to work to deliver these things and then at some point soon i would hope when i say soon i'm, I'm thinking here in the next three to six months We'll start to get a picture of what the fall will look like so i'd love to know your thoughts your theories especially as it relates to fall 2023 we'll talk about that and uh in future follow-up videos to this one and they also confirmed that they're going to have the free weekend return uh that's going to be coming up soon the free weekend was weird last time because they spun up a ton of servers and they were pretty much empty and i don't think that really gives the good impression because anybody who was checking out the game on a free server they're probably going to an a, a populated server so hopefully this time if they do spin up a free server 
just spin up one you know like one per region or something like that and if it fills up then spin up another um but most likely you ended up having people check out the game and coming in and playing things now with the voice cracking that means it's time to shift to part two of this video um if you guys are interested i'm just gonna plug a couple things check out the gay uh the ginger prime podcast uh, epic loot radio film it live on Wednesdays. Uh, this coming week, I uh, will have Hogue Law. I'm going to be talking about uh, kind of this state of the year uh, going into 2023 and more. It's going to be a really good show. Hopefully you check that out. Also, if you're in Fort Worth in uh, January, January 21st, I'm going to be a Hyenas Comedy Club. If you don't know, I do stand-up comedy. Um, and I would love it if, you know, try to get that place packed up uh, and have a good show. It's an adult-driven, you know, show, so don't bring the kids. And uh, that's all I'll say at that, uh, <laughs> at that marker halfway through. Okay, now that we're halfway through the video, uh, let's talk about the other things the dev kind of shared. Winter Convergence, this is year two. They're bringing in the Winter Warrior. Uh, he's going to be basically kind of start to model off of what we saw with the Halloween event. Uh, but they're thinking 15 to 20 people to take him down uh, for this event. Going to you know pop up randomly. They're also updating Brimstone Sand. So all the towns are getting the Winter Convergence treatment, settlements, capturing packages, doing all these things. Um, the Glee Mites are returning. So I think this is going to be really cool to see that for people who missed it the first time around, welcome to the Winter Convergence. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting to see. Uh, and, you know, obviously having uh, having that event come back and seeing how it expands, because this will be the first actual major event that they've released having its year two. So then, because even with Springtime Bloom, that will still be year one. So we won't get the next year two until the summer and then eventually in the uh, in the fall as well. So uh, they said that obviously Starstone Amorine mashup is going to be a part of this. Uh, it's going to kick off from Starstone. Um, I think I'm personally looking forward to this. I really enjoyed these dungeons. I really enjoyed these dungeons. I'm looking forward to stepping back into them in the mutated fashion. Now, the next part of it is focusing on territory control changes. So they said, and this is to kind of recap it for you, for you don't, if you haven't been following, shell companies are a real problem. Um, they're implementing a 72 hour cooldown. You can join, so if you leave your company, you can join another company, but you will have 72 hours before any activity that you do generates influences. You can't participate in wars, invasions, etc. Like you're just a part of it as a chat channel. And then after 72 hours, you can then participate in activities. They're also gonna have a war roster limitation. Um, basically they say, if you're defending the territory, you're gonna have to fill with 40 and you're gonna have 10 mercs. You can have the option, you can fill it with all 50 of your people, um, but you can only bring in 10 mercenaries. You will have to fill it in with your team. If you're on the attack, it looks like you can have up to 25 different mercenaries, um, you know, to be able to pull from. But if you're on the attack and the attacking company, you need at least, it looks like 25 people. I did hear a different number. It sounded like you could have more, but maybe they misspoke. Uh, we'll leave it at that. There's also a daily war limit that's going to be put into place per character server account, meaning if you have multiple characters in different worlds, that daily limit applies per character. So you can participate in one attacking war and one defending war per day, resets at 5 a.m. But if you have two characters, two different worlds, you can technically participate in up to four, but one per character on attack, one per character on defense. Uh, so that's going to be how that uh, flows out for the crafting. Uh, they like they have this all on the PTR. They've removed their removing certain requirements of gating for certain uh, recipes like healing and mana potions are all unlocked, but other potions are still going to require because they still want people to have and the towns to have that incentive to upgrade. And that's important, but a big unforeseen consequence in them nerfing the XP benefit from town boards is people aren't doing the uh, town projects. And so towns aren't getting upgraded anyway uh so they're nerfing the requirements for town projects now why does this personally frustrate me well i think the solution and the problem wasn't that people were turning in the towns for xp i think players should be able to be given the choice you could sure have nerfed it maybe a little bit in terms of xp but they've nerfed it into the ground so that it's just people aren't doing them and thus they aren't being completed so this is kind of them responding it so we're looking at a nerf followed by another nerf this is something i i'm going to continue to advocate for post xp progression after level 60 don't get me to 61 i don't need infinite levels but let xp have some value right so that even at level 60 town boards still have a value if you find items and you want to sell this also helps incentivize markets it helps incentivize people to go farm those items that might not necessarily be in high demand i think the answer wasn't to nerf town boards xp output or at least by that much and I don't think it's necessarily to reduce the amount of requirements that are needed. 
I think it's to actually look at what does XP give you at level 60 and they already have the solution. They have it for crafting, refining and, <laughs> and gathering. And so it just like frustrates me because like I really want that kind of system. I really want XP to mean something post level 60. And that could just be a bar that fills up that you get a little bit of gypsum a little bit, maybe like a little reward box. Doesn't have to be too fancy. Doesn't have to be overly, you know, complicated. But I think that would be something very interesting to see in the long run. Same thing goes for weapon XP as well. Like just make the values continue to have some value. It doesn't have to be the, the fastest value. In fact, I would advocate that it should be the slowest value and the slowest progression but it's still there it, it, and then it just makes everything that you do also working on that level of that level system going on right there so hopefully we'll see something along those lines brought in um, i'm sure i'm going to have other feedback and we'll have other videos to discuss this information here in the coming uh, days um, but i just want to get you guys the summary my thoughts and uh, obviously looking forward to the update uh, that's coming out soon we don't have a date on that i'll cover that as soon as we do because that means we're going to get our leaderboards and so much more. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of feedback and changes uh, as we go into 2023. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end, sound off with Sold Nation kicking ass and taking names and chewing bubble gum. Uh, something along those lines. I'm sure it's going to make me laugh. Uh, and just whatever in that regards that you think is funny to, to sound off and say. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. But until then, take care.